So a few weeks ago, I posted a poll asking you guys what my next video should be, and it was definitely not because I'm running out of video ideas, but interestingly enough, the uh, winner of that poll was a video on prolactin. Now, the reason for this, as I assume, is because there really isn't a ton of good information out there on natural ways to augment the hormone prolactin. And uh, because uh, the area of research surrounding prolactin is such an area of interest to me, I thought this would be a good time to take a deep dive into the hormone prolactin. Now, my wife is currently pregnant with our third child, so y'all be praying for me, but the reason I bring this up is that um, prolactin's most famous role is that of a hormone that's involved in the lactation in new mothers. However, there are a whole host of other roles that prolactin plays, including reducing stress and encouraging nurturing behaviors in new mothers by inhibiting ACTH and cortisol release, but it also appears to make moms more hostile towards potential threats and encourage maternal behavior. It appears to help mothers gain weight during pregnancy and and also appears to reduce anxiety and promote interpersonal bonding. But interestingly enough, prolactin also appears to have some pretty profound effects in men as well. It appears to promote fatherly behavior, decrease stress markers, promote testosterone and sperm production, improve fertility, and promote proper sexual function as well. However, what's most interesting is that there are a ton of other possible functions of prolactin as well, including promoting myelin repair and the growth of white matter in the brain, stimulating growth of the hippocampus in the brain, preventing brain damage from chronic stress. It appears to be involved in the pleasure associated with listening to sad music, but it also appears to lower diabetes risk, increase insulin sensitivity, improve immune function, reduce cancer risk, regulate heart health, as well as regulate electrolyte levels. And so even though prolactin appears to have some very specific roles when it comes to regulating milk production in new mothers, it also appears to have some other regulatory functions in both men and women. However, the issue with prolactin is that when levels rise too high or outside the context of caretaking, uh, prolactin can also have a notable negative impact on your health and mental status, something that I'm extremely well acquainted with. However, before I dive into my personal experience with elevated prolactin levels, I do want to talk a little bit about my personal experience with today's video sponsor, Element. Now, one of the most important and well-established factors that can improve your health and performance is actually just simply staying optimally hydrated. And unfortunately, it's impossible to stay hydrated without proper electrolyte intake, which is what Element makes so easy. Element is a perfectly proportioned electrolyte mix of sodium, potassium, and magnesium that makes it extremely easy to help meet your electrolyte needs. Now, aside from the science of Element's ability to help keep you hydrated, it also doesn't hurt that it tastes amazing and has absolutely zero sugars or fillers in it. And to be quite frank, um, drinking Element during my workouts over the past several months has been an absolute game changer for me in regards to my physical performance and my mental uh, performance as well. And the really cool thing is that right now, Element is offering my audience a free sample pack of an eight serving of Element for free with any order, but this deal is only available through the link that's in the description of this video. So make sure to follow the link down below or go to drinkelement.com slash nutrition library to snag this offer. Now, I first came across prolactin as an area of study about 10 years ago when I was in school getting my degree in nutrition and had just finished my second cycle of steroids and was attempting to recover naturally, which proved to be far more difficult than I had originally originally intended. However, I was experiencing a lot of depressive symptoms at the time, which kind of led me down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out what the heck was going on. And this is how I came across prolactin. As it turns out, one of the side effects of steroid use as well as TRT use is not just an elevation of estrogen, but also an elevation and prolactin. And the reason for this isn't exactly clear yet. However, it is thought that prolactin is involved in the negative feedback loop um, that is involved with the suppression of elevated testosterone. So when you introduce exogenous testosterone into your body, it does signal to 
uh, the area of the brain known as the hypothalamus to shut down the production of uh, gonadotropic releasing hormone, which is actually a um, fairly potent suppressor of prolactin. And so when you shut down the production of GnRH uh, via the introduction of exogenous testosterone, it also will cause an elevation in prolactin levels. Now, the issue here is that when prolactin levels rise too high, there's also a whole host of negative side effects that are associated with high prolactin levels, including leptin resistance, lowered glucose tolerance, and increased food intake, all of which appear to ultimately encourage weight gain. But when prolactin is too high, it also appears to cause a notable drop in gonadotropins and testosterone levels, appears to cause sexual dysfunction, hypothyroidism, gynecomastia, infertility, and can also lead to depression by suppressing dopamine levels. And this is why prolactin homeostasis is so important. When levels are too low, you can run into a bunch of issues. However, when uh, levels are too high, there's also a ton of issues to be mindful of. And so um, if you are interested in testing your prolactin levels, make sure to check out uh, the link that's in the description for 25% off of an at-home hormone panel that you can use to test your prolactin uh, with one of our uh, channel sponsors. Let's get checked. But with that being said, in my experience, the vast majority of guys are not dealing with low prolactin levels, but with high prolactin levels and the side effects that are associated with high prolactin. And the reason for this is that there are a host of uh, lifestyle factors that can actually lead uh, to increases in prolactin, including exercise, sauna use, a lack of stress. Interestingly enough, stress actually reduces prolactin. So when you aren't engaged in stressful activities, prolactin levels rise, but also sad events and even sad songs and movies appear to increase prolactin levels. The sound of a crying infant, simply being around children also increases prolactin as well as masturbation, but not sex, interestingly enough, and calorie restriction also appears to increase prolactin levels. Now, when you engage in one or several of these lifestyle factors, many of which are actually healthy lifestyle choices, it will signal to the hypothalamus in the brain to release a uh, protein known as uh, prolactin-releasing peptide, which uh, then travels to the pituitary gland to uh, signal the release of prolactin, uh, which is then free to carry out its biological effects, both positive and negative. But one of the effects of prolactin being released is actually a localized increase in dopamine levels, which actually happens to be the primary negative feedback required to shut down prolactin uh, production. When dopamine levels are high surrounding the neurons um, in the hypothalamus and the pituitary, it will bind to the receptors in these brain regions and actually shut down the production of prolactin, which means that the primary means by which we have to uh, suppress uh, prolactin prolactin production is actually by increasing dopamine levels. However, there are also a whole host of other hormones and neurotransmitters that also modulate the release of prolactin, including estrogen, which appears to increase prolactin by suppressing dopamine and by stimulating the release and growth of prolactin secreting cells. But thyrotropin releasing hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone also appear to increase prolactin levels and GnRH appears to suppress prolactin levels. And interestingly enough, the stimulation of the opioid receptor actually um, causes the release of prolactin levels, which appears to be one of the reasons why it is uh, so reliable at decreasing testosterone levels. However, serotonin also appears to increase prolactin levels. The neurotransmitter GABA appears to reduce prolactin levels, as well as the neurotransmitter glutamate, which appears to stimulate the production of prolactin. Now, because many of these lifestyle factors that uh, lead to an increase in prolactin levels are actually healthy lifestyle style choices. It's usually not going to be in your best interest to stop working out or stop using the sauna. Um, one of the better ways to help modulate the release of prolactin is via modulating these other um, neurotransmitter and hormonal pathways. And uh, because this is obviously a, a channel that is focused on the modulation of hormonal pathways and neurotransmitter pathways uh, through the consumption of food, we're going to be focusing for the rest of this video on foods to 
to avoid as well as foods to eat in order to modulate and optimize the levels of prolactin. Now, when it comes to foods that increase prolactin levels, one of the most important aspects of food consumption to be mindful of here is just simply not eating too much food. Uh, obesity has several times been shown to increase prolactin levels, and even though the mechanisms aren't fully understood yet, it likely has something to do with the intricate role of prolactin in appetite regulation, as well as the negative impact that obesity has on GnRH levels, which again is a hormone that suppresses prolactin. And so when obesity rises, you're going to have a messed up um, appetite regulation, which appears to lead to an increase in prolactin levels, but also you're going to suppress GnRH, which is again going to lead to an increase in prolactin levels. And now luckily, weight loss has also several times been shown to lower prolactin levels in obese subjects that go onto a weight loss protocol. And so if you are carrying some extra weight, one of the best ways to simply lower uh, elevated prolactin levels is just to simply lose some of that extra weight. And now, interestingly enough, prolactin levels also appear to increase when you get too lean as well, which seems a little bit counterintuitive. However, the mechanisms here are fairly interesting. Now, there isn't a ton of research on this quite yet. However, from personal experience, when guys end up getting too lean, prolactin levels appear to increase for two primary reasons. One is that because prolactin is involved in the stimulation of appetite, when you get too lean, prolactin appears to be increased in order to encourage the consumption of food and encourage weight gain. However, when you get too lean, there's also a suppression of GnRH, which again um, is a potent suppressor of prolactin. So when you get too lean, it suppresses GnRH, which allows for the elevation of prolactin levels. And so if you're uh, carrying a few extra pounds, you probably want to lose uh, some of that weight in order to optimize prolactin levels. However, on the flip side of that, again, if you are too lean, one of the best things you can do to optimize your overall hormonal profile is to simply gain a few extra pounds as well. Now, when it comes to other foods that may elevate prolactin levels, uh, one of the first things that you want to be aware of are foods that suppress dopamine levels. Because dopamine is such a potent suppressor of the release of prolactin, one of the best things you can do is to optimize dopamine levels. Now, again, kind of going back to our conversation on obesity, obesity has also been shown to suppress dopamine levels. And so again, if you're carrying a few extra pounds, one of the best ways to optimize prolactin levels is just to simply lose that extra weight in order to optimize dopamine levels, which will again um, help to optimize prolactin levels as well. But on top of obesity suppressing dopamine levels, polyunsaturated fats also appear to suppress dopamine levels and specifically omega-6 polyunsaturated fats. And so when you uh, consume or rather over consume omega-6 fats in comparison to omega-3 fatty acids, there does appear to be a notable suppression of dopamine, which does appear to lead to an increase in prolactin levels. And on top of this, a specific lack of omega-3 fatty acids has also been shown to suppress dopaminergic function. And so one of the best ways that you can optimize on a kind of a, on a bigger scale, optimize dopamine levels is just to simply optimize the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids that you're getting into your diet. And one of the best ways to do this is just to simply avoid um, oils that have a high omega-6 fatty acid content, specifically seed oils and most plant oils. And then on the flip side of that, prioritize omega-3 fats through the consumption of uh, fish as well as grass-fed beef and grass-fed um, animals as well. Now, another thing that you want to avoid in order to optimize your dopamine levels as well as your prolactin levels is to avoid high blood sugar. High blood sugar has been shown to suppress dopaminergic function as well as uh, decrease the amount of the enzyme that is required to produce uh, dopamine. And so even though there isn't any direct evidence evidence that high blood sugar can lead to elevated prolactin levels, it does appear to be fairly potent at suppressing dopaminergic function and also does appear when at least combined with protein does appear to lead to an increase in serotonin as well as a decrease in dopaminergic function and an elevation in prolactin. And the reason for this is that spikes in blood sugar appear to allow for the permeability of tryptophan across the blood-brain barrier. 
carrier. Now, the reason you see this increase in prolactin is that tryptophan is the precursor to the neurotransmitter serotonin, which appears to directly stimulate prolactin release by binding to the receptors in the hypothalamus and indirectly stimulate its release by suppressing dopamine levels. And one of the clearest examples of this phenomenon is a phenomenon that you see with the intake of SSRIs. SSRIs are a class of compounds that um, kind of force the, the presence of serotonin in the synapses of nerves, which do appear to suppress dopaminergic function as well as increase prolactin lactin levels. Now, because of the effects of high blood sugar on serotonin and dopamine and prolactin, it may be wise for individuals that don't handle sugar very well or are relatively inactive to avoid sugar intake. However, this doesn't appear to be a phenomenon that's exclusive to sugar intake. Brown rice has also been shown to elevate prolactin levels in preclinical trials, which means that uh, this phenomenon may not be exclusive to sugar, but may apply to carbohydrates as a, a just a general class of macronutrients. And so this isn't necessarily a nail in the coffin when it comes to carbohydrate intake and optimizing prolactin, but for individuals that are specifically trying to optimize prolactin and lower high prolactin levels, um, eliminating or at least restricting carbohydrate intake for the purpose of uh, reducing blood sugar may be a good option. Now, another class of foods that you may want to be mindful of when it comes to foods that may elevate prolactin levels are foods that increase the activity of estrogen or increase the activity of the estrogen receptors. Because estrogen receptor activity can lead to a release of prolactin and a growth of the prolactin releasing cells in the brain, um, any food that has estrogenic activity is, um, has also been shown to increase prolactin levels. And these would include things like phytoestrogens, synthetic xenoestrogens. But again, it's also going to be important to lower your body fat. When you have an elevated body fat percentage, you will experience an elevation in estrogen levels because of the overconversion of testosterone into estrogen via the aromatase enzyme that fat cells produce specifically. And so when you lower your body fat percentage, you're going to one, reduce estrogen conversion, but also you're going to secondarily, because of that, reduce the production of prolactin as well. Now, interestingly enough, you also would probably want to avoid foods that stimulate the opioid receptor because opioids have been shown to increase prolactin levels. Um, avoiding foods that activate the opioid receptor have also been shown to lower prolactin levels. And these would unfortunately include things like wheat and whey and casein, as well as barley and specifically the protein that's in grains known as gluten have been shown to increase uh, prolactin in certain circumstances. And so even though all of these haven't necessarily been linked to increases in prolactin levels. They have been linked to um, a, an activation of the opioid receptor in the gut, which may um, increase prolactin levels. And so specifically for individuals that have been tested for high prolactin, um, uh, it may be in your best interest to avoid these foods as well, even though they haven't been directly linked uh, to an elevation of prolactin. Now, the next class of foods that you want to be mindful of in order to optimize your prolactin prolactin levels are foods that decrease thyroid hormones. And the reason for this is that when thyroid hormones decrease, which is a bad thing, there is a stimulation of TRH and TSH in order to stimulate the production of more uh, thyroid hormones. And the reason this is um, bad for prolactin production is that TRH and TSH directly stimulate the production of prolactin as well. And so one of the main ways to lower prolactin is actually to just have optimal levels of thyroid hormones. Now, when it comes to optimizing your thyroid hormones and avoiding foods that lower thyroid hormones, there are a handful of foods um, that are known as goitrogens that actually inhibit your thyroid's ability to uh, utilize iodine to produce thyroid hormones. And so um, it would be in your best interest to um, go about avoiding some of these foods like cruciferous vegetables and beans, legumes, um, and as well as various roots that have been shown to inhibit the function of the thyroid gland. Avoiding these foods will 
optimize thyroid hormones, but also optimize prolactin levels secondarily. Now, aside from all these foods that it would probably be in your best interest to avoid, there's also a handful of other uh, food products that have been shown uh, to uh, increase prolactin levels, including beta-glucan and pectins from grains and oats and fruits, as well as mushrooms that have been shown to increase prolactin levels, as well as alcohol and nicotine. Now, on the flip side of all this, it's also important to prioritize foods into your diet that actually suppress prolactin. And again, one of the most surefire ways to suppress prolactin release is by increasing dopamine and vicariously through increasing the intake of foods that support dopamine production, namely the amino acid tyrosine. Now, fortunately, one of the most surefire ways to suppress prolactin release is to simply, one, increase the intake of foods that have a lot of l tyrosine in them, or two, to simply supplement with l tyrosine. Supplementing with l tyrosine has been shown to suppress prolactin, as well as another related molecule known as L-DOPA that is actually found in mucuna purines. Now, I don't typically recommend that mucuna purines be taken for long periods of time for the purpose of suppressing prolactin because of the, uh, the risk of dependence on L-DOPA. However, consuming mucuna purines is is an extremely effective way to suppress prolactin levels. However, there's also a handful of other cofactors that are involved in the production of dopamine, namely iron, which has been shown to affect dopamine levels and prolactin levels, B6, which has also been shown to increase dopamine and uh, decrease prolactin, as well as B1, B3, and vitamin C, which are all necessary for the proper production of dopamine, as well as its proper function in regards to suppressing prolactin. Now, interestingly enough, the amino acid cysteine has also been shown to preserve dopaminergic function. And so even though it's not involved in the production of dopamine, um, the combination of cysteine and glycine can increase the amount of the uh, antioxidant glutathione in the central nervous system, which has been shown uh, to preserve dopamine in the synapses. And so as you can see, there are a handful of just foundational key nutrients that are absolutely needed by your body in order to optimally produce dopamine, which has been shown in a handful of clinical trials to actually suppress prolactin as well. And so prioritizing all of these nutrients, either through supplementation or through diet, is going to be one of your best bets in order to um, lower prolactin levels. Now, the stimulation of the specific glutamate receptor known as NMDA has also been shown to increase prolactin levels. And so consuming molecules and vitamins and minerals that actually block the NMDA receptor have been shown uh, to actually decrease prolactin and namely zinc and magnesium have both been shown to have activity at helping to suppress the activity of the NMDA receptor and have also been shown to suppress prolactin levels. Now the neurotransmitter GABA has also been shown to decrease prolactin levels and so when it comes to dietary measures to optimize GABA levels, it's extremely important to optimize your intake of arginine, proline, B6, and zinc, all of which have been shown to at the very least increase levels of GABA in the central nervous system, and some of which have actually been shown to directly um, inhibit the production of prolactin. And so if you're wanting to optimize your prolactin levels via the optimization of GABA, it's important to prioritize these nutrients. And you can also opt for supplements such as L-theanine, which have also been shown to increase GABA levels. Now, um, another hormone that you again want to optimize in order to uh, reduce prolactin levels is thyroid hormone. And so you don't just want to avoid foods that lower thyroid hormones, but you also want to consume foods that elevate thyroid hormones, which will suppress TSRH and TRH, which are going to lower prolactin levels as well. And foods that are going to raise thyroid hormones are going to be things like iodine as well as selenium and vitamin A. And so as you can see by now, one of the best things that you can do in order to optimize prolactin levels is just to ensure pretty much that you have no nutrient deficiencies. And even aside from all these specific mechanisms of these specific nutrients, um, vitamin 
vitamin E and vitamin D deficiencies have also been shown to elevate prolactin levels through various mechanisms. And so again, one of the best things you can do in order to um, optimize your prolactin levels is just to simply prioritize nutrient intake. But other than that, guys, that's pretty much all I have for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below, as well as make sure to check out the link in the description for a free sample pack of Element with any purchase, as well as 25% off of an at-home uh, hormone panel that you can use to actually test your prolactin levels. But other than that, I will see you guys next time.